on the 14th of September 1959 when Luna 2 space probe first made impact on Moon. We started exploring the Moon. Ten years down the road and in 1969, humans stepped on the Moon. That's one small step for man. Since then, we have come a long way to study Earth's natural satellite. So far, it's the only celestial body which humans have actually visited. The last visit by the man to the moon was in 1972. When the last manned mission left the moon, so many mysteries remained. Mysteries we are still trying to uncover. After that, there was only man-made rovers and space probe visited the moon. But if you are wondering, why are we studying moons in such a long time? Well, the simple answer is, moon and earth were formed during the creation of our solar system, around 4.6 billion years ago. During this period, earth has gone through many changes, but the moon is relatively unchanged. And studying the moon can give us the idea about the history of the earth and possible formation of our solar system. For example, the Apollo missions collected around 400 kilograms of rock and dust samples from the moon. After studying these samples, scientists have concluded that the moon was formed when an object about the size of Mars hit the earth very early in our planet's history. The collision produced a ring of debris around the Earth which later came together and formed the Moon. Moon is one of the most explored celestial body in our solar system. Various space agencies worldwide studying the Moon, including ISRO. ISRO's Chandrayaan-1 was India's first lunar mission launched in 2008. The primary science objective of the Chandrayaan-1 mission was to prepare a three-dimensional atlas of both near and far side of the moon. Another thing was to study the distribution of various mineral and elemental chemical species covering the lunar surface. This included the permanently shadowed areas of the moon, such as North and South Pole. Especially the South Pole is of greater interest for scientists. As the sunlight doesn't reach this area, that makes the crater formed on the South Pole very unique. It is postulated that water ice could survive in the permanently shadowed craters at the Moon's pole. And they may have fossil records of early solar system trapped in the water ice. One of the interesting findings of Chandrayaan-1 it confirmed the presence of water molecules on the surface of the Moon. Now, ISRO is preparing for Chandrayaan-2 mission, which will be an advanced version of Chandrayaan-1. The mission will have an orbiter, lander and a rover as well. In this mission, it will map the various elements present in the lunar surface. With the synthetic aperture radar, it will probe few meters Moon's surface for the presence of water and ice. Chase 2 and TMC2, which were also in the Chandrayaan 1, will perform further study of lunar exosphere and will prepare a three dimensional map to study the geology of the Moon. The rover will move on the lunar surface, will pick up the samples of soil, rocks, and do a chemical analysis and send the data to the spacecraft orbiting above. At first, the mission was a joint venture to be done with Russian Space Agency. They were supposed to build the lander for the mission, but due to the failure of their Phobos grunt mission to Mars and the technical aspects of the lunar project and the Phobos grunt were similar. So Russia withdrew from the mission. After that, ISRO decided to execute the mission independently and it will be launched in December 2018. Team Indus The biggest drawback of space exploration is the cost. If the cost is reduced, then we will be able to achieve more things. This is the exact thing Google is trying to do with its Google Lunar X Prize moonshot event. 
The objective of the event is to successfully place a spacecraft on the surface of the moon and after landing, it should move 500 meters, send HD pictures and videos of the lunar surface to Earth. The conditions are, no government organizations can participate in the competition. The teams participating in the competition has to be 90% privately funded. The grand prize of the mission is $30 million. 16 teams from all over the world has participated in the competition. Team Indus is the only team participating from India and is led by Rahul Narayan. To remain in the competition, all the teams had to show a verified launch contract by the end of 2016. Only 5 teams out of 16 were able to show a verified contract and qualified further in the competition. Team Indus has made a contract with ISRO and will be launching its spacecraft with world's very reliable launcher, PSLV. It will be also sharing a PSLV ride to low Earth orbit with a Japanese team, Hakuto. In this competition, there were different milestone prizes for various tasks in the mission, such as $1 million for soft landing, $500,000 for mobility, and $250,000 for imaging. Team Indus has successfully won the prize of $1 million for its landing technology. The total cost of the mission is around $75 million, and the team is backed by various business tycoons such as Ratan Tata, Nandan Nilekani, and many other companies. Team Indus with its Lab to Moon program offered people from all over the world to participate and send a mini experiment to the moon. The experiment should be a help to human evolution to become a multi-planetary species. The conditions of the experiment were that it should be a size of a soda can, should weigh less than 250 grams, and it should be able to communicate with their onboard computer. There have been 25 experiments selected and only one of them is going to moon. Each one of them is different from the other with an extraordinary vision of human evolution on the moon. The different topics are inflatable dome experiment, laser sighting of lunar soil, brewing beer with the help of yeast, yeah we want beer. One of my favorite is the photosynthesis on the moon. Even though only one will be selected, remaining experiments can be developed and cultivated to help human life here on earth. Just for an example, the scratch resistance glass was first developed by NASA for the helmets of Apollo astronauts. Now, it has many real-life applications such as our glasses and screen of our phones and many more. There is one more thing Team Indus is offering. Do you want to send your name to Moon? If you do, here is your chance. You can send your individual name or you can send the name of your group. The name will be inscribed on a cube which will go with the mission. This is another way for you to help Team Indus for its funding. So overall, PSLV will carry Team Indus project, Hakuto project, a mini experiment, and a cube inscribed with names. Team Indus has already called a shotgun for a window seat of PSLV. The lander will land at Mare Imbrium on the moon. It is one of the largest crater in our solar system. The discovery of lunar water by Chandrayaan-1 has renewed the interest in the moon. It gave a new hope for the colonization of the moon. This is just the beginning of new space exploration era. With more innovation and growing technological maturity, there will be much more we can achieve. There is no doubt the science fiction movies we watch nowadays will sooner be a science reality. Just like the science fiction novel, from Earth to the Moon, written in 1865, became a science reality after a century in 1969 when we landed on the Moon. Another recent example of science fiction becoming a science fact is SpaceX's vertical landing. This was just one more step closer to be multi-planetary species. And once we unlock the mysteries of the moon, the possibilities of becoming a multi-planetary species can be endless. Mm -hmm.